What's up YouTube, this is LDS Reliance. Today I'd like to talk about the different stages of battery charging. Last time we talked about state of charge versus depth of discharge, but how do you get a battery to be fully charged after it's been discharged? In this video we're going to concentrate on lead acid batteries because each different type of battery has slightly different charging stages. We'll talk about lithium based batteries in a video in the future though. Lead acid battery chargers range from very simple to very complex but they generally follow three main stages of charging. The same is true for solar charge controllers, which are basically just battery chargers that use input voltage from the sun. So here's a chart showing the stages of charging. First we have bulk, then absorption, then float, and then technically while it's not really a stage because it doesn't happen every time, there is an equalization process that it can go through as well. The bulk stage is about 80% of the recharge. During this phase, the charger holds the current constant, but the voltage increases. There's a lot of different opinions and philosophies on what formula you should use to calculate the current for this stage, but the manufacturer will give you that specification. But whatever current is used, it should not take the battery over 125 degrees Fahrenheit if it's a flooded battery, or 100 degrees Fahrenheit if it's an AGM or gel battery. The next stage is absorption, where the charger holds the voltage constant, but slowly tapers down the current. Again, the best voltage for the absorption point will be provided to you by the manufacturer. This stage completes the remaining 20% of the actual charging of the battery. The third stage is the float charging stage, which doesn't actually charge the battery, but just more of maintains it. The charger or charge controller provides a lesser voltage than in the absorption phase, and only about 1% of the current that's used to charge the battery. You could run this stage forever if you wanted to, and basically it would just keep the battery topped off. Equalization is necessary every once in a while to maintain the health of the battery. In this stage or process, the charger will provide a constant voltage that's much higher than the other stages. This is done to equalize the specific gravity inside each cell of the battery and to desulfate the metal plates. Speaking of specific gravity, ideally we would base all of these stages of charging off of specific gravity measured by a hydrometer. The specific gravity of the acid inside a battery is the truest way to tell the state of charge. However, hydrometers can be hard to use and are only accurate down to five thousandths. So most of us will use voltage instead, which gives us a close approximation. Most battery manufacturers will provide charts like this to show you the different voltages of the different stages of charge. In reality, most of us are going to rely upon a microprocessor controlled battery charger. With minimal input except for basically the type of battery chemistry we're using, usually these controllers will manage these stages for us. But it's still a good idea to be able to program them with the exact specifications the manufacturer gives you for the longest battery life. Battery chargers have different current ratings, so in order to pick the right one for your particular battery, there's a couple different formulas we can use. Take the capacity rating of your battery in amp hours and then divide it by the C rate or charging rate provided by your manufacturer. If you don't have the C rate provided by your manufacturer, you can take the capacity and divide it by 4 for more advanced chargers or divide it by 10 for more low tech chargers. So let's say we're using a low tech car charger and our, let's pretend our battery is a 10 amp hour battery. If you divide the capacity by 10, you get one amp. So we would wanna make sure that our charger could provide at least one amp. Then we would set the bulk current to one amp and then we would let it charge. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of people out there with some very strong opinions about the best way to charge a battery. I'm sure I glossed over some things and left some other things out, but I'm trying to simplify it so that most people can understand the process. So I'm open to corrections and criticism, but let's keep the debate civil. Thanks for watching another video. If you found this helpful, hit subscribe for more videos in the future.